eyes. They just fucked with the wrong Mexican. Machete. Now, Machete first came about with an idea Quentin Tarantino and Robert Rodriguez had. Basically, they would each make a film and then get other filmmakers to make trailers for fake films which would play before and after each feature film, which were Planet Terror and Death Proof. Each film would have this really cheap 1970s look and most had ridiculous names such as Hobo with a Shotgun, Guns with Guns or Werewolf Woman and BSS. And one of these trailers was actually directed by Robert Rodriguez called Machete. And this trailer can be seen at the start of Planet Terror which was his contribution to this grindhouse idea. And even though Grindhouse didn't do too well in the box office, Rodriguez liked the idea so much that he went ahead and made a full length feature film of Machete. Danny Trejo plays Machete, an ex-federal who is recruited to assassinate the US Senator but ends up being double crossed so he sets out to get revenge on those who set him up. I'm not going to go into detail as to why he was asked to assassinate the US Senator and why he was double crossed because there's just so much going on. If you just go along with it, you should absolutely love it. The film doesn't follow Machete as much as some may have hoped and I didn't really get to know anything more about this character than I did from watching the trailer. The female actresses play much bigger parts than I was expecting, which is a good thing. A very good thing. Jessica Alba plays an agent who, at the start, you think will be against Machete and all what he's trying to do, but actually ends up supporting him with this war against the politicians. She has a nude scene, but apparently she wasn't actually naked during the filming. They just removed her clothes digitally using some computer software. I want that software. Michelle Rodriguez, who is looking fan, plays a Mexican freedom fighter named Chi, which isn't a spoiler because if you've seen the trailer you can pretty much guess that. Also Lindsay Lohan stars in the film. She doesn't have a lot of screen time, she appears about halfway in the film and then just shows up at the end. Pretty much every scene with her in the film, she is naked. Yes, she also has a friend, who is also naked throughout pretty much every scene that she's in. I'm not saying Danny Trejo isn't bad looking or anything, but how the hell does he manage to score with Jessica Alba, Michelle Rodriguez and Lindsay Lohan all in the same film? I don't know, but it's funny as hell to see them come on to him. No. Moving on. As for the male actors, we have Jeff Fahey, who also appeared in Planet Terror. He plays the edgy businessman who hires Machete to kill a senator, who is played by Robert De Niro. People have been saying that his acting in this film wasn't great, Maybe that's because he wasn't interested in the project, or maybe because Robert Rodriguez didn't want him to act his best, because he wanted it to feel like one of these crappy films from the 70s. Either way, I think he did a great job. And seeing him run around dressed as a Mexican, to me, was hilarious. Cheech Marin, star of numerous other Rodriguez films, plays Machete's brother, a priest who helps him fight back against the bounty hunters sent to kill him, one of these being makeup effects legend Tom Savini. How can you go wrong with a priest holding two shotguns? Steven Seagal, on the other hand, was ridiculous here, with his fake accent and fake tan. His acting was so wooden, as was his fight scene at the end. He was like one of those animatronic elves you get in shopping malls at Christmas. Machete starts off straight at the action with decapitations all around, but after that it becomes much more dependent on politics and story, which some people have found to be a bit of a problem. To be honest though, it was everything I was hoping it to be, and everything I was expecting it to be. The fight scenes for the most part were awesome, no holds barred, gory as hell, people getting their intestines ripped out and mowed down by a gatling gun flying through the air. What more do you want? I paid for an exploitation film and that's what I got. What you have to realise is that these exploitation films from the 70s were really bad, which is why Machete isn't a great film. But is it entertaining? Hell yeah it is, it's one of my favourite films of the year. It has some incredibly cheesy snippets of dialogue, one of them being said by Jessica Alba at the very end of the film. We didn't cross the border! The border crossed us! Yeah. That line basically sums up the whole movie. At the very end before the credits roll, Rodriguez hints at two possible sequels called Machete Kills and Machete Kills Again. Sadly this film didn't do too good in America, and with the release of Harry Potter, it didn't look like it did too good here in England either. So chances are, he won't follow through and make a sequel. As this review is coming late, it probably isn't playing in theatres right now, but it'll be on DVD in a few months. Which is why I recommend that you rent it from the store, have a few mates over, have a few beers, and watch this. Because this is a man's movie. If you like Planet Terror, there's no reason why you won't like this. See it. See it now. Be quiet, be quiet, be quiet. Now 
Well, this film has been talked about an awful lot here in the UK in newspapers, magazines and on TV shows. As it is Gareth Edwards' first feature film, it has rave reviews from critics and was made with a budget of only £9,000. The film starts off by giving us a little backstory. Basically, people found life on another planet and astronauts send out a probe to collect these alien life forms. However, upon re-entering the Earth's atmosphere, the ship crash landed, releasing the extraterrestrials all in Mexico. It then cuts to a great pre-credit sequence involving the military firing at one of these creatures, putting you in the right mood to see an action movie. But this isn't an action movie, is it? It then cuts to before this incident, which will be the rest of the film, as a photographer is ordered to escort his boss's daughter out of Mexico and into America. A lot of immigration issues in this video. However, shit happens and they are forced to take the hard route into America through what's known as the infected zone, where these alien creatures are roaming free. And I couldn't find a decent image of these creatures off Google, so I drew one. Shit. Now this film is essentially a road movie, which means that it is fairly slow paced, so don't expect an action film. Gareth Edwards comes as such a big inspiration for a spike filmmaker like myself, as he made a film which is this good with a budget of only £9,000. In an interview, he said him along with I think three other crew members and the only two actors in the film went in a van travelling through South America or Mexico and whenever they spotted a nice location they would pull over and shoot the scene. He had no storyboards, most of the dialogue was improvised since he didn't have much of a script. And like I said, there were only two paid actors. The rest were just people he met in South America and he would basically ask them if they wanted to be in his film. He didn't care if they couldn't act, because he wanted everything to seem natural and more realistic. Apparently after they'd shot the scene, Gareth Edwards was editing the film on his laptop in his bedroom. He was literally stacking the shelves of a supermarket by day and at night was editing the film, as well as adding all the graphical elements in CGI. Throughout the film, the title is given a double meaning. We learn that these giant creatures haven't been killing the majority of the people, it is in fact the military bombing the land which has been killing everyone. In parts of the movie, I kept comparing scenes to other similar sorts of movies. For instance, there's a scene really reminiscent of Jurassic Park when the T-Rex attacks. Also, at the end in the gas station, there was something which reminded me of the Crazies remake and Frank Darabont's The Mist. And throughout, I kept thinking of The Road, which was a very emotional post-apocalyptic movie from earlier this year with Viggo Mortensen. I will say now, the CGI wasn't great. But with the budget of £9,000, you not expect something like War of the Worlds. The tanks, jets and boats, they honestly looked pretty good but it was the actual monsters which looked fairly tacky. But luckily we don't see an awful lot of them, which was probably deliberate from the director. Towards the end of the film, there was one scene which felt very out of place, and it's the scene with the old drunk woman. I don't know, it just felt like she walked on set and they were like, excuse me, we're, we're, we're trying to film a scene here. And she just stared for a while and went. In Empire Magazine issue 258, I quote, an amazing achievement for a first time filmmaker measures up to the finest indies for performance and character work and the biggest blockbusters for jaw dropping effects and it has the year's best sex scene too. So being the kind of guy I am, I looked out for this so called sex scene and it got to parts of the film and I was like oh right now it's gonna happen in the motel beside the campfire and it got to the end of the film and I was saying to myself Empire lied to me and then it appeared these two giant octopus crab type creatures hugging making out and I was like what the fuck now that I got that out of the way I want to address the title monsters it can be a bit misleading I personally knew what to expect which is why I loved it but imagine someone on a Friday afternoon walking into the theatre and seeing the poster and with that title you're expecting maybe the next District 9 or possibly Cloverfield but that isn't what you get it's a character study a love story happening at a time of an apocalypse it's inspirational, influential, and it's way better than that other movie. Two nights before he disappeared, he came to my house. He said he was about to change everything. Science, medicine, religion. He wouldn't have left that, Sam. He wouldn't have left you. I really should have watched the original Tron again before seeing this. Tron Legacy takes 20 some years after the original and Kevin Flynn, played by Jeff Bridges, has disappeared into the world of Tron, but no one in the real world knows. The first 20 minutes of the film takes place in the real world, introducing us to his son Sam and what is happening to his father's company, Encom. I thought the opening was really well done actually, 
and it's nice to see what's been happening while Kevin's been away. But this part of the film isn't even in 3D, which is what I paid to see it in. Everyone in the theatre just took off their glasses until Sam entered the Tron world, known as The Grid, which is when the 3D comes into play, but even then, it still didn't do it for me, there wasn't a lot of depth to it. The visuals are outstanding. Everything has a real nice, clean, slick look. The facial expression on Sam's face when he enters the grid is what I was like watching it on the big screen. When he enters the grid, he is taken prisoner by these guys with orange suits and is forced to fight in these gladiator style tournaments which are amazing. People start getting ripped into cubes by these glowing discs which are awesome as hell and the light cycle scene in the arena is literally one of the most exciting experiences I've had in cinema all year, second to the rotating hallway sequence in Inception. But after that, it's just a lot of fairly boring dialogue, it doesn't really build any more momentum, it's like an awesome firework display. Then the rest of the film is just the journey home. It's at this arena when we meet Cora, played by Olivia Wilde. She didn't really do much, she was just there in a skin tight leather suit. Sorry, got a little distracted there. Like I was saying, she didn't really do much, but like we care, as long as she's on screen, who gives a shit? Kevin Flint, the main character's father who disappeared 20 some years ago, when he and his son meet up, there appears to be no connection on screen, and his son spends more time hanging out with Olivia Wilde. <laughs> Jeff's only there really to explain why he disappeared and he just spends most of his time talking about Clue. Clue is basically the young evil version of Jeff Bridges who wants to get back into the real world. For the film Clue was made using CGI technology. They did a similar thing to what they did with the curious case of Benjamin Button. Here they captured Jeff's face and put his face on someone else using motion capture technology. This younger CGI Jeff Bridges looks so fake you can clearly tell it's just a computer effect. Over the years Kevin Flynn has literally turned into the dude. He is the dude of the futuristic world. Some of his dialogue is even similar to what the dude would say in The Big Lebowski. You expect him to come out at the end and just say, this aggression will not stand man. This guy Clue, he peed on my rug. The soundtrack by Daft Punk, oh shit is it awesome. It's probably better than just listen to the soundtrack than actually watch the film. The majority of the film is just boring scenes with dialogue which never seems to go anywhere. I think this is something which kids will not go along with, they'll just see this film to look at a few cool things, which there are a lot of. But after watching the trailer, nothing feels new when you're watching it on the big screen. You've already seen everything, especially halfway in the film, you've already seen everything which needs to be seen. Another reason why you may wish to avoid this is Michael Sheen as a David Bowie star character from the 80s. Also, I forgot to mention, at the very beginning of the film, they futurized the Disney logo, which looks friggin' awesome. Overall, Tron Legacy does what it intended to do. It's a film that will please the hardcore fans of the original, as well as giving some entertainment for the casual viewer. It was the dialogue which just threw me off a bit. Don't expect a sci-fi epic, because that's not what you get. For the most part, it was entertaining, I enjoyed it, and I would love to own one of those light suits. They look cool. Anyways, that was the end of this review video. Hopefully you'll get to see some of these films and let me know what you thought in the comments down below. I'll review three more films for you guys in the new year, so until then, peace out y'all.